really sorry What's about up? this messed up audio messed up. But I hope you can still enjoy this brand new video Whoa. You don't fuck with that bro Welcome back guys and it's time to go balls deep and oh my god balls deep prediction magic is way too powerful because once again every single thing I said last week ended up true again word for word. I mean at this point my videos are just spoiling the goddamn show. Call me Julius Novocrona at your service bitch. Like honestly I don't know how I'm doing it at this point or why it happens to be word for word according to my predictions. Maybe. Just maybe, Tubata really is my friend. I mean, some of you messaged me on Twitter and Instagram saying you'd think of me whilst reading the chapter. Pause, no homo, of course, oh jeez, oh no, what have I done, why are- So anyway, the latest Black Clover chapter begins with Oster's sweet, sweet face happy with the fact that his Black Bull family came to save him. Gorsh is angry as predicted regarding his sister Marie, but not at the royals, at Oster himself. I mean, everyone's angry at Oster to be honest. The whole squad is a dysfunctional happy family. Kind of <laughs> you know, boy, does that remind me of my own, you know what I'm saying? I found it funny and Yami declares to Kira that he is here to collect his two members. Nero, now known as Sekri, tries to be Sundere but it doesn't work. These type of things don't work against Yami because he's a manly man with hairy arms just like me of course. So Yami sets her straight and throws a black bull robe onto her to make her feel at home. This scene is great character development because it shows Nero's capabilities of self-reflection by acknowledging her flaws. When someone does this, it's what leads to growth as you see through your mistakes. Hindsight is 2020, right? Remember, in manga chapter 208 to 213, Nero felt regret that she doubted Asta from the very beginning and only used the Black Bulls to fulfill the mission that the first Wizard King set for her. So the chapter is coming full circle as Sekri feels she is not worthy of the affection she receives in chapter 219. However, remembering what the one person she truly loved stated to her before he left pushes her forward to accept her new family. You know, my friend Tabata put Nero's character in the position of sympathy. He set her up that way so readers could understand her. These feelings and character development stems from her cornerstone of being rejected by nobles and royals for her useless magic whilst being a noble herself. Her insecurities of being in an era that she isn't from makes her dysfunctional just like the Black Bulls themselves. Therefore, it makes sense for her to join as Yami stated in the chapter. I mean, come on, it's not like she does not fit in or seems out of place in the panel they show in page 6. This is what makes a character likeable and relatable. Tabata does this for every single character in the Black Bulls, especially since he planned Nero's reveal from the very start of Black Clover, which makes it even more important to the story. The foreshadowing of Nero becoming all the way from chapter 1 is evident. So because of this, I find myself caring about her character more than one would think. Nero is easily in some fans top 5 characters in the entire Black Clover franchise for example. So just like the characters in the chapter stated that Nero being the bird the whole time, she was a Black Bull member the whole time anyways to everyone involving the readers and characters themselves. Moving forward, the chapter does another double page spread in page 7 with Nero being a member. I mean God what? Ah! You see that shit? That's what I'm talking about! No one beats Black Clover double page spread spam cause they be lit! Anywho, things are cut short as Damnatio uses his power to render their magic useless and he has an inner monologue of his intentions. Tabata is still trying to build his character of being a schemer, someone with intellect that only thinks about his own ideology. Remember in the previous chapter it said that he judged his own father just to maintain the justice system. The way Damnatio has been depicted is a lawful evil guy, where he allows evil actions to occur to maintain the justice system of the Clover Kingdom, as well as of course maintaining the culture of royals having all the status and power. This is proven due to the fact that at the end of the chapter, where he contemplates the plan Julius has proposed as something he can go along with as it still aligns with maintaining order that he approves. On top of that, who can really defeat the Black Bulls at this point fam? They are freaking Arthur. Arthur uses a spell that he used against Elf, Gorsh and Marie. And the Black Clover universe has already established to us that new spells manifest in times of need. Arthur also witnessed Lyft, the original owner of the Swords and Grimoire, do something similar multiple times in the previous arc against the Devil. 
Arthur's ability to learn things really fast is well versed in the manga. I mean, he learned key detection in the middle of battle, whilst Yami himself took years to learn this ability. So basically, Arthur's spell to nullify the magic around the people he chooses and he turns Damnatio's magic off and it's really OP, it's like a long range attack. After this, now I don't know what Yami was thinking, I think he was smoking some of that goo shit, maybe he was doing some of, some of that crack okay. I don't know man, cause man was looking too hyped in this chapter, look at those facial expressions right? But thank god Fugo Leon, and yes I butchered his pronunciation, I know that, I just can't pronounce his name god damn it. And you know that dude and Nozel they jumped in and they stopped him right? And now it's funnily enough right, these two characters when they first interacted they were having a feud in which Nozel hated Asta right? And Fugo Leon was defending him, but now it's the opposite, both of them are defending Asta and it's kind of going full circle again and I really like that right? So Nazel jumped in and these guys are like, not today bitch, you are gonna kill this guy. We can't be too mad at Yami because he's the whole reason the other captain showed up in the first place. Yami planned all of this, uh, sorta I guess, we, as he could have. I don't think he was planning on trying to off Damnatio, but I'm sure he was willing to from the start. The other captains start defending Arthur and call him a capable squad member, proclaiming to the court that they don't want to lose him. This makes Arthur look really good in front of the royals since two royal captains are backing him up. That's got to count for something, right? And as we said last week, remember we said the court is more likely to listen to any other squad member than the Black Bulls. And this is the two royal captains, so of course we predicted that shit. Props to us, props to you. <laughs> Anyway, these two have some of the best reputations, so they're much better than someone like William Vengeance is what I'm trying to say. They both have been considered to be Wizard King 2 by Tabata and officially in the manga. Also, can I just point out something? The art is looking too clean in this week, because I really like it. I mean, just look at Asta's... I thought Asta looked cute in page 1, I'm just saying, fam. FBI, open up! Nero be looking fire as usual too, I can't forget about my girl, the my girl Nero. Anyway, it turns out that Julius has a plan set in motion to save Arthur. Julius as we all know has future prediction magic. Damnatio Kira is forced to decree that Arthur has been exiled and the Black Bulls are supposed to watch and investigate him whilst he's out of the kingdom. Damnatio knows what's happening and that this is all a way to postpone Arthur's sentence until he can be proven innocent. Basically, as Yami said, they're going abroad. One thing we should all note, however, is that it is heavily insinuated that Damnatio, the royals and Augustus, they do not know what happened to Julius Novocrono. They do not know that he died and came back alive as a 13 year old boy. This is because Augustus says Julius did not appear in their time of need, as well as the fact that Julius stated that he cannot reveal himself just yet because he will lose his status. Julius is wise and understands how the royals are. He is 42 years old and understands the oligarchy corrupt monarchy system whatever you want to call it that's in place throughout the years. So he cannot reveal just yet that he is a 13 year old boy with no power as his status will become void due to the prejudices. I think overall this is great, it's a new and refreshing way to get this arc rolling. One thing I've always liked about this manga is that it always finds a great way to diversify locations in which the arc takes place. The first major mission took place in Soul Sea Village and then from there we moved on to a dungeon and then back to the kingdom and then a cave of some sort, then underwater and then in the forest of witches but then we spent quite a lot of time in the Clover Kingdom as you can see, like a lot of time. So the fact that this arc is seemingly going to continue the trend, going to new places, it's really good to see Tabata continue this trend. We just have to wait and see what kingdom Tabata decides to take after. Is it the Spade Kingdom since Judas confirmed it's a nation of demons? and this can help prove Arthur being innocent as the nation of demons means that it will prove to the Clover Kingdom there are other demons that are evil and they exist and they need to be defended and it will prove Arthur's origin what the hell is going on exactly right I mean this could be also a good time to do a time skip there are just so many routes that Tabata can take with this arc so it's a little harder to predict what is going to happen with Bulls Deep Prediction Magic so one of my theories is that I think the Black Bulls are going to the Spade Kingdom and they 
will learn about the anti-magic demons past or afters because the spade nation is known for that affiliation as I said and they worship something. The theory that the anti-magic demon having a similar backstory to Aster is also still possible and it will be like Naruto and Kuruma type thing but I'm not saying this because I want it to happen. In fact I kind of hope that it doesn't but it seems like there is still potential for it to be well done and carry weight. I mean we can all confirm by now that the anti-magic demon was someone of low status as the word magic demon did not know who the hell he was. In addition, the anti-magic demon went into the five-leaf grimoire that Licht created during the time Nero was asleep for a few years in the very beginning 500 years ago. This means it was kind of destiny for him to take on Asta as he was the closest person to him more than Asta even knows as he stated himself. This insinuates the idea that maybe the anti-magic demon planned something from the very start for this to happen or he has witnessed Asta's story meaning that they are the same and that's why he said Look, we're closer than you think. Another theory we all have as a community is that Asta is originally from the Spade Kingdom and was left at Haj Village which is literally right at the border of the Clover Kingdom between the nations. This is why he was left at the church in such a rush. So Barta Kane used this arc to explore Asta's backstory and origin. I mean, I'm pretty sure we are going to meet another dwarf in this arc since Tabata has confirmed they exist with Charmy. Dwarves are specialized in weaponry. Arthur just happens to wield the largest weapons in Black Clover, of course. This means a so-called dwarf can train him or give him a power-up in this journey of his whilst in exile. But if it is indeed the Spade Kingdom, I think the people of Spade will recognize their grimoire and know that they're from the Clover Kingdom as the fifth leaf represents the devil, right? And this will cause a panic, possibly even a war. It will all align with Julius's predictions. And I feel as though this is just the beginning of something much, much bigger. This arc could be huge, possibly the biggest and most interesting. And if it were to end quickly, I don't think it would be quite as good. I want this arc to be long, just like the elf one. And it looks like Tabata has taken a liking to do this. Anyway, that's everything I wanted to say in this chapter. Make sure to smash that like button, follow us on Instagram or Twitter. And yeah, let me know your thoughts on the chapter in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys next time!